I want to ask you something because I know that you're, su you're such an advocate for positivity within the world of cancer that we live with today. What was it that was in you that made you decide that I want to be proactive here? You know, because I've been through this journey. What, what was it? What happened was with the blog, it, I have a very big family and all my cousins were like, can you start a blog and the 20, 30 of us won't bother you with the same questions every day? Sure, so I did that. And one of my cousins accidentally shared it on Facebook and then it sort of went viral. And people from the UK, Western Canada, everywhere started messaging me. And that's the moment I knew that that, that slip, that, that accidental share was a good thing because people were messaging me saying, you know, my brother who's handicapped can't, he can't express what he's going through, but he has cancer. Mm -hmm. But I know what he's going through now. Mm -hmm. And I had a mother from our community, her daughter messaged me and said, my mother went through this just a while ago. And she's so happy that you're speaking out about it because she couldn't. And our family now knows what she went through because she could never share that with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. And that's the key and factor here yeah. that I find so inspiring about your story. Other than the fact that you're a graduate. Yeah. I love that word. I love yeah. that word. And I learned that word from um, Lisa Ray, the yeah. actress. When yeah. I interviewed her a number of years ago, you know, she, one thing she said to me is that, you know, you know, I don't like those words that make us sound like we just, you know, crawled out of, yeah. you know, the depths Survivor, of hell. Yeah. yeah, she said, I don't like those words. I'm a graduate, I've graduated yeah. with honors, with yeah. distinction, <laughs> yeah. you know, and that's kind of something that I'm hearing yeah. you tell me with your story. Uh, I wanna ask you one thing, just because there's been massive dialogue and discussion about this, like around the world, and really is quite in the forefront now. Um, and that is just the whole, ideology behind the use of cannabis in, in um, you know, cancer treatments. There's okay. so much, you know, documented proof that, you know, it does help with curing cancer. What I, I would love to hear from someone like you who has been through the process, yeah. how you feel about that. So, you know, part of my process was to research a lot and I turned a lot to holistic medicine and a lot more natural medicines and cannabis oil was one of those things that some of my uncles even told me about surprisingly but they they did research with me and for me and one of the big reasons that I actually didn't do the oil was because I know that um, not that I'm against it I'm not against it in fact uh, if I didn't have the kids I would probably have tried it yeah um, but the effects that you have, the you know, it sort of really lets you relax and you become very lethargic. Yeah, that I, I couldn't afford to do that with my kids. Right. So for me, for th for that decision alone, that's the, the decision I took. In the conventional discussion that's being had right now about this, yeah. if you consider the statistics of the amount of people that have so many forms of cancer in so many different stages, and basically people are dying like flies all over the place. Yeah. Right. Um, yet you know, the FDA and all of these different, um, you know, moderating bodies just, you know, have their reasons why they won't allow something like this to go into the market, um, even though there's tried and tested proof that it does, in fact, you know, reverse things. As someone who is a graduate from this process, would this be something that, you know, you feel should be allowed on the market because the negatives are far less than the, the potential positives. I think that there's a lot that should be allowed on the market, including cannabis oil, um, and it should be left to the choice of, you know, whoever is going through the process. But here's the thing, and this is going to be a big opinion on mine, but, but I find there's a lot of propaganda around a lot of things. You said FDA, yes. pharmaceutical companies, and all that. There's a lot of the natural ways that are being sort of hidden. Yes. Um, and there's a lot about cancer itself that we don't know. It's an incurable thing, right? But I think through more and more research that it's actually very, it's curable. Mm -hmm. With this propaganda that I'm starting to feel, I feel like that's sort of being hidden. We're not given enough information no. to make an educated decision for ourselves. The decisions are being made by the powers that be as right. opposed to allowing us to decide what decision we are, you know we should have the right to make over our bodies 
you know? Because there's lots of F FDA approved medications out there that cause a massive long list of side effects, yeah. which are quite horrific. So you think to yourself, why are they allowed? And why is, it, is this not allowed? Yeah. And it's a discussion that's being had. It's not one I'm making up. Yeah. It's, it, this is the, the serious discussion. There's so many stories, like research that I have read, you know, doctors, Dr. Budwig, I'm not sure if you have yes. heard of her. All of, a lot of these natural things that you could do to cure thing, to cure cancer or in, in minimize it, shrink tumors and all of this. But a lot of that research, some of it's being wiped out mm -hmm. because it's just too easy, mm -hmm. right? And one of my biggest things- Well, there'll and, be no money to be made then, would there? And that's what I mean about the propaganda, right? Yeah. And so, but one of the biggest things that has really pushed me to be um, not only an advocate, but to teach people um, truly about loving ourselves is disease and illness and all of that can only grow in a toxic environment right. and our body becomes toxic with the environment and everything that we're putting in but our stress our anxiety and all of this that we hold inside and so our thoughts our feelings and everything like that and i'm not sure if you heard of anita marjani dying to be me yes her book got me through and her book and her story and i got to meet her last summer was what I realized, well, maybe I'm not loving myself enough. Mm -hmm. And I started to focus on myself more. I started to give myself more attention, more credit and all of that. And truly, like, literally, like, if I hug you, Raj, I, I hug you because I, I truly, I love you, I like you. And why can't I do that to myself? Why can I, it feels good when I hug you. I'm sure right. it feels good when I hug you. Of right? course it does, darling. <laughs> why shouldn't it feel good when I hug myself? Yes. Or give myself that same attention? Yeah. But it has to start there. Yeah. Even you look at Buddhism and all of these things, and we could like talk about all of that and you know forever. But you know everything starts with self, with the right. nucleus. What is right. the nucleus of your life? Exactly. Is you, and then everything else are the layers outside, right? Right. The last thing that I want to um, ask you, which I think is the most important part for a lot of people that will be listening to this, how do they go about? making sense of all of the information that's out there. What are the resources out there that you tapped into to kind of get their head around what this journey is going to be all about? Well, the first thing I suggest is when you're diagnosed, do not run to Google because Google will scare the shit out of you. Mm -hmm. It scared the shit out of me and my husband. Uh, we immediately thought, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And that is not the feeling that you want. You want to be educated right off the bat first. So. The first resource should always be, you know, your, your doctor to say, well, exactly understand what it is. And sometimes the doctors do have to give you the extreme case, but ask them to give you the, the case as it is as well. Right? As it pertains to you. Yes. Right. Right. Because, you know, by law, they have to say, well, you could die. Yes. Thank you. I know that. But what is my, what, where am I sitting exactly? What is my current state? Right. right. Instead of worrying about the future state, what is my current state? Mm -hmm. And go from there. And then after the doctor, where, where would you suggest? I, I cannot say to anyone, do not go through Western medicine and, and, and all that. That's definitely your choice. But I also suggest to see a natural path mm -hmm. to really, because part, being, being at that point means there's something going on inside that you need to clean out. So while you're, while you're going through the process, make it easier on yourself. Mm -hmm. I really believe the like holistic partnering with the Western medicine will really make that process easier. Chemo, radiation, all of that is not easy to get through. And so if you can pair them in meditation, right? you need to meditate because the moment I started meditating, which was actually after my treatment, is the moment I felt my body healing. Because it's a, it's a mind, heart, spirit relationship it's yeah. tapping into you know just aligning all of that for yourself but if you can spend time with yourself i can say read books and all of that too but every book is going to give you something different right but talk to people talk to people like me people right. who have gone through it so they can sort of save you some time and not you know i've had people call me panicking saying oh my gosh i just read this okay let me just take you away from there and let's talk about what's going on with you right now and you know on that note sima um this outreach of yours, this kind of mission to help others, you know, kind of get their heart, mind, you know, body around what this journey is going to be is something that you really do advocate for. 
what is the blog that they can go check out and read the submissions of your day-to-day -day journey that you had. Let's, let's send our viewers over there. Sure, it's seematalks.com. Thank you, my darling. I absolutely adore everything about you. Thank you so much for sharing your magnificent story. You inspire me. You inspire me to want to do so much more with my life. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.